Hi guys. It is a glorious day. Over the top beautiful summer day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. We have somehow slipped into Friday somewhere around July 24th, 2020. Somewhere around there. I don't know what day it is anymore guys. Here at Bugs in a Jar Farm which has been closed for the season uh, due to the corona panic. And just to eliminate all rumors, I do not have, never have had, have been tested negative for corona panic, but I uh, made the difficult decision to shut down Bugs in a Jar Farm to anybody outside of New York. If you are living in the great state of New York, Come visit us. Oh yes, and uh, before I get any further, this is, my name is Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles. This is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, doing what we do pretty much now once a week. Guys, you know, I'm, I'm still conflicted because remember I took this show off the air uh, until the only news on the planet was not how many people have died of corona panic. We had a brief respite uh, with the distraction from the distraction, but now the original distraction is back. So I think I'm just pretty much going to be doing a once a week roundup. And that, of course, is my ecological meltdown roundup rant where I go over to my favorite environmental news roundup from mongabay.com where we go check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at Manga Bay for this week's laundry list of uh, insults against this planet which may or may not include the corona panic and it so happens that Rhett is leading off and titling his roundup Environmental defenders voice concerns as Corona Panic 19 crisis deepens. I guess it's the Corona Panic 20 crisis. Uh, anyway, this is interviews with several uh, environmental defenders uh, talking about their conservation work, which has been upended. Uh, and the criminal and corporate abuse of the environment in the time of the corona panic. And of course, what they're talking about here is that the environmental criminals, the planet-eating corporate, uh, corporatocracy, has been given a green light to attack this planet not only the planet eaters, the planet nibblers, the, uh, the poachers, the people trying to feed their starving families because they're not allowed to work, conservationists are not allowed to do their work, uh, even the mainstream media had a story today about how climate uh, funding that countries, what they're doing to put more money into this distraction, they're pulling money out of the money they had slated for climate change research and mitigation. This is just the latest way that the corona panic is taking down this planet uh, as anything related to the environment has been completely taken off the table and the uh, global corporatocracy is cheering this on. Make no mistake about it. All right, you will not believe this, that the world's biggest meat packer bought illegally grazed Amazon cattle. Brazil's meat packers have long been accused of laundering cattle a process in which young calves are fattened on newly and illegally deforested lands within indigenous reserves or other conservation tracts 
then transferred to, quote, legal ranches uh, before being sold to meat processors who turn a blind eye. Yes. <clears throat> the Brazilian government has abetted this illicit accounting sleight of hand by not requiring tagging and tracking cattle from birth, so laundered beef is sold to China, the European Union, and other nations, as well as to Brazilian consumers, all of whom are unaware of the Amazon deforestation connection to their beef eating habits. Um, anyway, so they're looking at, into this story. This is the main reason I do not eat beef. There, there, is many, there are many reasons not to eat beef. Uh, the reason, the main reason I do not eat beef is because of this. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> yes, here we go for the knee slapper of the week. International investors urge Brazil to take real action to stop deforestation. Yes. Uh, please. Um, investors need evidence that the Brazilian government and corporations, particularly in the beef industry, will follow up on their commitments with meaningful action. Yes. Uh, also, climate change has already caused damage to some economic sectors, and we are only seeing the beginning. We are only seeing the beginning. Yes. So now we're looking at Nigeria's wildlife traders uh, eyeing the post-corona panic boom. Yes. You will not believe this. Restrictions imposed by the Nigerian government to slow the spread of the corona panic have hampered field operations of conservation agencies and NGOs. Conservationists fear that a reduction in patrols and enforcement leaves Nigeria's biodiversity already under pressure due to a vast wildlife trade extremely vulnerable. Yes. Uh, a ban on interstate travel has not stopped the flow of wildlife products between forests and cities. Do you think so? Wow, here's another uh, sky is blue headline from Rhett. You will not believe this. The World Bank funded factory farms are dogged by alleged, alleged environmental abuses. Yes. Weren't we talking about this last week? I guess this is a continuation of last week's story looking at the World Bank's International Finance Corporation, the IFC, just in Ecuador. This is one example has provided $120 million to Ecuadorian pork and chicken producer uh, despite widespread and evidence-backed concerns about the effects of industrial-scale livestock farming on water sources, air quality, and the climate. And for full disclosure, when I was living in Ecuador, I did not eat beef, but I ate plenty of pork and chicken. Okay. Here is their video of the week, getting back to the corona panic, titled Conservation on Pause. They're specifically uh, zeroing in on sea turtles. 
they mentioned this last week how it you know the sea turtle eggs this summer are are completely unprotected that the sea turtle egg poachers and I guess the adult turtle poachers uh, also have free reign to eat every single sea turtle egg pretty much on planet Earth in the year 2020. Uh, thank you to the economic lockdowns of the corona panic. Uh, there you go. Let's see. I'm just, uh, I'm skipping through some of these. Uh, here's a story on intensifying coral reef bleaching. The Great Barrier Reef suffered its third major coral bleaching event since 2016 this past March, with scientists saying the extent of the damage was far greater this time than in past bleaching events. Up to 60% of the reef was affected in the latest bleaching. Yes. Anyway, but the techno-utopians are out to save the Great Barrier Reef with lab-grown coral. Yes. Uh, bad news for narwhals. If you are a narwhal, beware. Killer whales are on the rise in the Arctic. Yes, climate change has led to dramatic ice loss in the Arctic, allowing killer whales to access parts of the Canadian Arctic they previously could not. Yep, and uh, apparently... According to this estimate, the newly liberated killer whales ate one th are scheduled to eat 1,500 narwhals who have no natural defense. I don't know. I guess you can't stab a killer whale. I love it. You know, whenever orcas are being shed in a good light, they're called orcas. But when they're the bad guys, they're called killer whales. So we now have whales killing whales. Both of what they are, they're big dolphins is what they are. We have giant dolphins eating giant dolphins because uh, what's well, good news for one giant dolphin, bad news for another. Yes. Uh, a steady influx of killer whales could lead to ecosystem transformation through a top-down trophic cascade. Yes. Uh, let's see again, just moving. I actually saw this story in the mainstream media. You will not believe this. Chinese dark fishing fleets illegally defying sanctions by fishing in North Korean waters. Yes, do you think so? Um, looking at uh, more than 900 Chinese fishing vessels operating in North Korea, uh, they were mostly targeting the Pacific flying squid. Did you know there was such thing as a flying squid? Uh, so now that is sending the North Korean fishermen into Russian waters. Yes. Okay, this is a continuation of the story that we mentioned last last week about Parag protected areas in Paraguay being hit hard by illegal marijuana farming. More on that. Looking uh, at all the different all the national parks in Paraguay. Getting mowed down. 
Oh boy. Again, guys, I have a lot to do today. Um, here is, you know, again, uh, my one problem with Manga Bay is why they parrot this corporate greenwashing. This is acting like how the certified timber uh, deals really do work. Yes. Mm-hmm. Moving on back to reality. You will not believe this. Forest restoration, not just halting deforestation, vital to Amazon. The Brazilian state of Maranhão has lost more than three quarters of its original forest cover and the remaining old growth forest is severely threatened with the Amazon forest on the edge of collapse, say researchers. Yes, uh, but the new laws in the area passed in May will reduce the amount of standing forest farmers must preserve, which could lead to even more large-scale legal deforestation of even secondary forest and reward illegal deforestation. Do you think so? Uh, Sri Lanka, rich in biodiversity and in human wildlife conflict. Human wild and wildlife encounters have increased rapidly in recent years and go beyond elephants and leopards now. Competition between humans and our fellow earthlings has grown over the shared space between humans and wildlife due to human encroachment, deforestation, habitat degradation, and climate change. Do you think so? Uh, and you can take whatever is true there or anywhere else. Uh, let's see. Here is the newest study on Amazon drought and deforestation feedback loop. Researchers have warned about the Amazon rainforest to savanna tipping point for years, but a clearer picture of how this may happen is, well, is happening, is emerging with new research. Um, a new study found that the deforestation drought feedback loop now accounts for 4% of the region's drought. Yes, uh, experts uh, say that the actual percentages could be higher, do you think so, leading to major deforestation while climate change impacts have intensified. Yes, uh, deforestation and drying in the Amazon rainforest could cause, otherwise read, is causing the rainforest to spiral down into becoming a degraded dry savanna if nothing is done to deactivate the feedback loop. However, it is difficult to say how soon that tipping point will be reached. That tipping point was probably reached in about 1970. Uh, here's more about illegal fishing. Good Lord. Uh, all right, what is going on? The latest news from the deep sea mining industry ramping up uh, on the planet. Sediment plumes 
from deep sea mining could pollute vast swaths of the ocean, scientists say. This is this new they suggest that deep sea mining would generate damaging sediment plumes and noise pollution that would negatively affect the midwater column. Yes, mining plumes will likely distribute sediment and, disso and dissolved metals across vast parts of the ocean, compromising organisms' health, and introducing heavy metals into the food chain. Yes, numerous companies have contracts to explore the seabed for minerals. Uh -huh. Oh boy. Okay, what is going on with energy guzzling McMansions? Energy guzzling McMansions make the American dream a climate nightmare. A new study finds that wealthy Americans living in spacious houses in upscale neighborhoods are responsible for 25% more greenhouse gas emissions on averages average than those living in smaller homes in poor areas. Do you think so? Residential properties account for about a quarter of our country's total carbon footprint larger than the total emissions for Germany. Yes. And not surprising, uh, since they're so far north, Maine, Vermont, and Wisconsin are the largest consumers of energy. Yes. All right. Here we go. I love this. Uh-huh. Population and consumption challenges we can win. Yes. Enrique G. Ortiz, senior program director at the Andes Amazon Fund, argues that if we want to increase the resilience of the planet to future disasters, Yes, we need to address two critical societal issues, population and consumption. Do you think so? I think we've heard. Oh, uh, yes. There is one way to fix both of those problems, but if you don't know what it is, I'm not going to get off on that rant again. Oh... Uh, Okay, uh, here is looking at wild harvested plants. Uh, here's the latest. The corona panic has increased demand for herbal remedies. I have been eating elderberry all week. Uh, I have a big crop of elderberry in the backyard. Anybody wants some elderberry? Come to Bugs in a Jar Farm if you live in New York. Uh, the corona panic has increased demand for herbal remedies, some containing plant species that were already facing pressures due to over-harvesting. Yes, there you go. This is how the corona panic is taking out rare plants. Okay, they're now using every tool in the box to save the Sumatran rhinos. Okay, get out the Sumatran rhino toolbox. Alright, here you go. In case you do not understand that, where there is cattle ranching and soybean farming, there is Fire. Study finds. Most of the fires in the Amazon rainforest last year were associated with industrial agriculture. Ha, huh, do you think so? Of the 981,000 
fire alerts that occurred in Brazil last year between July and October half were in meat in two meat packers potential buy zones uh, and in the areas surrounding Bunge and Cargill's soybean silos. Yes, do you think so? Alright, this is short and to the point. The Jaguar hunted for parts in Mexico. This is the total what they share in the introduction. Local wildlife protectors cannot stop the trafficking of jaguars linked to demand for traditional Chinese medicine. And there you go. So it cannot be done. You can kiss jaguars goodbye. They, raising the white flag, Mexican jaguars will be annihilated off the face of the planet to supply traditional medicine to China, which is kind of, I don't quite follow this, jaguars don't live in China. So how could jaguar parts be traditional medicine in a country where they, don't, where they live in another hemisphere? That statement is absurd on the face of it. All right. You will not believe this, guys. Uh, Amazon fires are raging despite an official ban. Hmm. You will not believe this. Landholders in the Brazilian Amazon today, as I'm bringing you this, are continuing to burn the forest despite an official government ban on burning in the region. Wow. Wow. I, just, I cannot believe this. Uh, these are this latest research from Greenpeace coming a week after Brazil's own National Space Research Institute uh, released data showing deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon has increased for the past 15 consecutive months, putting the 12-month rate 96% higher than when Brazilian President Jair Bozo Nero took office in January 2019. Yes, uh, independent assessments of the situation uh, are consistent with other data showing a strong increase in forest loss this year. We were uh, just talking about this uh, environmental official in Brazil being uh, shit canned, you know, for talking about fires. And now we have the Madagascar environmental regulator. Yes, uh, has been sacked the day after the environmental headquarters went up in flames. Hmm. The, uh, the, the, the office, which houses important documentation relating to environmental permits and impact assessments, has, conveniently enough, burned to the ground. Uh, okay. Sounding the alarm about illegal logging? There's an app. For that. Yes, okay. Here we are. Only a few rotten apples causing most illegal Brazilian deforestation, according to this study. It is well known that agribusiness, especially cattle and soy production, is the major driver 
of illegal deforestation in Brazil, which has seen soaring rates of forest destruction since the election of Jair Bolsonaro in many of those agricultural commodities end up being exported to the European Union. Hmm, but little has been done to curb the problem. Do you think so? Uh, but now, a new study finds that while a, around 20% of all agricultural exports from Brazil to the EU appear to come from illegally deforested areas, uh, only about 2% of the producers are responsible for the majority of that illegal deforestation. And I don't know about that. Um, here's another story about mass coral bleaching. Uh, a new study finds that the survival of coral reef outplants dropped below 50% if the sea surface temperature rose above 30 and a half Celsius, otherwise known as 89 and a half degrees Fahrenheit, is the uh, death knell. All right, here is looking at the impact of hunting on migratory shorebird populations. Jesus, um, this is looking at the all Asian. Australasian flyway, a uh, new study, uh, the demise of at least a third of shorebirds in the flyway since the 1970s. Uh, yep. From, let's go over to, from that flyway to Mesoamerica, I love that, Meso mess of America, Keystone Mammal plunges 87%. Now this is the white-lipped peccary, uh, the, these little pigs that range from Mexico to Argentina are in precipitous decline in their range. According to a new study, their numbers have dropped by as much as 90% over the past 40 years. The main threat to the white-lipped peccary is the destruction of its rainforest habitat largely attributed to the expansion of agriculture and cattle pastures. Yes, the loss of peccaries will have significant ramifications for rainforest ecosystems which the animals are important in shaping through seed dispersal, tree control, and creation of watering holes. Uh, anyway, guys, just like happened last week, I smell my planet-eating factory farmed chicken pie burning in the, I think it's a turkey pie this week, burning in the oven. And uh, I need to go enjoy a planet-eating turkey pie. And then the little dog and I, uh, we need to get out and figure out what to do next here on Bugs in a Jar Farm. So if you enjoyed what Rhett Butler and Manga Bay had to share with you, please spend a moment to thumb up this video. And if you feel like subscribing over here to the limited edition Collapse Chronicles, by all means do so. We do appreciate the support. And get out there and enjoy the summer of 2020 while you still can. Bye, guys.